Hi, this is Gloria, Life Coach, and welcome to another episode of Life Say Shuffle. Hi, this is Ron Johnson, Life Coach and Mentor Coach, and welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Today is Freestyle Thursday, and no topic, no guests, and we're just going to have a conversation. I think I'll take the lead on this one. Um, I had a conversation with my son via text last night, and um, you know he was on our podcast a, a couple of weeks ago, and his ambition is to be an NFL player. So he wants to actually get in the NFL. He wants to obviously, you know, be that star. That's that's what his his goal is. He's a junior right now in high school, and at this point, being a junior, you start looking at colleges. Colleges start looking at you as far as you know, getting a scholarship. And um, he's always asking me, is that what I need to do to get big? What I need to do to get big? You know, um, big means he wants to grow, you know, another four or five more inches and um, and get more size because the position he plays. So he texted me last night and he says, hey, dad, you know, what do you think about this? And what do you think about what, which is um, his friend told him that now goes to college that, you know, you start taking steroids. Mm. And I was like, um, actually, no, that's not what you want to do. Um, over Obviously, over text, it's, you know, you can't explain much in detail. But I said, no, this is the way you want to do it. And I pretty much outlined the fact you want to work out five days a week. You want to, you know, eat more food. And if anything, you can take some creatine. That, that's completely fine. But just to go hop into this taking steroids, it's, that's not the way to go. That's just not the way to go, uh, especially from, I call it the bro hookup. Which this dude told you to take this. Where the hell you can get it from? You can't walk into your local pharmacy, walk in and say, "Hey, by the way, I'm here. Where's some over the counter steroids? Got to take that." And um, it, it can have side effects to it. And even if you got it from a homeboy, which is mean do it on the corner, they gave you something. Where's he getting it from? And how's he actually, um, you know, make sure it's safe? You know, we don't know. So, but I liked about I liked about it, which was the best thing, is actually came to me and asked me a question straight up. It wasn't trying to hide it or do it on his own or go on um, you know, internet and figure out what he should be taking, where to get it from, and all that stuff. So uh, I thought it was pretty cool. And from our conversation, it pretty much looked like it's gonna go a different route versus a steroid route. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. That that came out from the left field. I was totally surprised. I was taken back. Um, it just was it. Just what it just what it is. Yeah. And um, it was um, it was cool. I think um, you know. I rather at this point, my kids come to me asking questions, regardless of what the question is, rather than going to another source because that helps build mm -hmm. a better relationship. And at the same time, you know, if you go to the internet, you can find a thousand million different sources or information and it can be very super confusing. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, let's talk about it. Okay. What's, what's going on? More or less, I'm not going to shut them down. Like, oh, this bad thing to take it. And it's, it's wrong. You know, don't do it. You know, I want a more clear understanding of why and why is this friend said you start starting to get big and, and there's more context than just getting big. That's just, that, that doesn't mean anything more facts. Yeah, so that's where the information then is not um, clear to a lot of people, or it could be misleading too, right? Um, because uh, I think I'm, I don't know, but I know of someone who was doing that before. And when I asked why, why are you doing that? Why would you even want to go there and use that? Because I want to get big. But so for some people, using that in their mind, it's just, I want to get big and mm -hmm. using steroids will help them get big, but they don't understand, realize, you know, like what you said is all the, the facts. They don't have all the facts, you know, and all the information behind it and using that. It's not just getting big and what can it really do to you? Well, when I was going through that bodybuilding phase of mine and you no, know, I, I dabbled in, you know, I took steroids and um, the idea was at that time I need to get big. And when you compare yourself, let's say in a bodybuilding world and, you know, contrary to demand, it, it runs rampant, not just steroids, but growth hormones. Uh, people are taking um, insulin shots right before a show. So it helps upload the body full of carbs. And you're not just taking, so, so you got to real, realize steroids, not one item. Okay. There's different types of steroids. There's different types of growth hormone. There's different types of all kinds of just mess you take out there. So when I dabbled in that that field, I was doing like everybody. First, I got it from a boy, which was a friend or a friend. He gave it to me. 
I took it. Next thing you know, I'm breaking out with acne. Second thing is I sh- hit the wrong spot, right? Because you're going online and, and this is time of early 2000s. You're trying to go online and figure out, you know, what spot to hit and what you're doing. Uh, and obviously they can save some junk. I mean, technically it can be a biofuel with number of cooking oil or, mm-hmm. <laughs> or lead. You, you don't know. You're just going based upon trust. Mm-hmm. Then I found a second guy and he actually, um, he was good. He, he, you know, I didn't have issues. The first guy I was breaking out. I was having acne issues and all this kind of crap. And um, the second guy was, was good. I mean, if I needed it, it was right there. For whatever, it was really, really good. And um, he helped take me, help, helped me out a lot and understanding how, understanding he cared enough to understand how to help me how to do it versus here you go. You know, this is what you need. There you go. This is it. This is it. He actually said, okay. And I actually was able to reach out to him like, hey, man, I'm going through this. What should I do? Okay, this is what you need to do. He just really cared about helping people versus just selling, you know, the first guy was just a dope dealer. He just wanted to sell you some stuff. But over time, you can take that stuff, not cycling it properly. It can have effects of long-term testosterone. As far as, you know, the, the truth of the matter is, is that taking steroids can be beneficial under the right medical provider or physician. I mean, a doctor and you get them from a doctor and you're under some care versus from homeboy. Um, you know, because someone can watch you, you know, your testosterone can go very low. What causes that to happen is that you're not producing enough of, of natural testosterone, you're producing synthetic testosterone. So your body says, well, there's too much, shut down, I'm not going to give you enough, right? There's no difference than you're pumping gas in your car and click, that tells you right then there it's full, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. So that's what happens. And what starts to happen is, is that you start getting, can get, depending on how much you're taking, testosterone shrinkage. And at the same time, it's like this. You want to have sex, but the other thing's not working right. <laughs> you're thinking, you're thinking, but it's, it's, it's not. You wonder what the hell is going on. And, and, and those are the side effects that I, I witnessed because I, I, I was just taking too much, just, just overtaking it too much, just trying to get super huge. Um, and obviously, your body then says, oh, too much testosterone. It can start producing testosterone, which can give you a gyno, um, it can give you acne. So, um, and you know, it, I don't, I don't disagree with taking it. If you have a medical doctor, you know, physician can control because there are some good benefits to it, but if you're getting it from a boy on the street corner, no, yeah. but it, it, it affected me. I, I remember, you know, it, it just ain't working. I mean, just you're psychologically, you're there mentally, you're there, but it, it just ain't working. It just ain't the engine ain't starting, okay? Yeah, <laughs> it's like a cold battery. This is not working. So, yeah. So that's why I don't want my son to get involved in things like that because mm-hmm. it's not from a doctor, it's not from physician, all that stuff. So yeah. that's the reason why. Well, the good thing is that he came to you. So the, you know, the best person to go to and ask questions about it is you because you've experienced it. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's a good thing. So I'm wondering, like, <laughs> is there a steroids to grow like two inches taller that i can take <laughs> I'll, I'll sign it for that if there was <laughs> actually you know what if you really want to grow if you really want to grow two inches taller um i seen this done in a documentary um this guy was short right it's like a short man syndrome let's say it's like mm-hmm. five foot two mm-hmm. so what they end up doing is they end up breaking his femur and what they did is added spacers and pretty much nuts and bolts put the space in between his legs oh no legs thank you <laughs> Yeah, so you know, if you really, really want something, you can go get it. But it's a documentary; and it was a true story, and the painstaking of that and recovery is this monumentous. That at some point, you gotta say, "So, dude, let me get some shoes mm-hmm. and put an extra couple of inches on the shoe." Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> so what I'm gonna do. Okay? That's why we have heels. So I'll stick right? to that. <laughs> well, men don't have heels, right? Well, yeah, that's true. But they do have shoes, like. They have those platform shoes from men. I remember those like back in the 80s or 90s. <laughs> I actually let me take my comment back and I'll say whatever you choose to wear, it's up to you. I'm not saying shoes or heels are for a man or for a woman. Mm. I'm just want to be hip with the times and make sure it doesn't matter. So if you mm-hmm. want to wear heels and you're a guy, go at it. Doesn't matter. So yeah, <clears throat> I'll stick to my wedges and heels to add extra a few inches taller. I'm cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. So what about you? What's going on? Um, this week 
I actually, I've just been really, um, just been very, very excited a lot lately with, you know, with, a lot of things are going on and coming up for us um, before ending this year. Um, I know it's been a very difficult time, you know, this past several months, what are we on now, seven or eight months? But as we end this year, I'm, you know, getting more and more excited with just everything that's coming up for us with all our seminars and then um, the get, all the guests that we've been having in our podcast and just connecting with them. Um, they've been just really, we've just met so many wonderful people and just the connection with them. I, I can't, I don't even know what to say. It's just, it's priceless, you know? And I feel like this, is this a coincidence? Does it just happen? Or how does this work? How, how did this happen? Because it just, you know, like Ray, who we really connected with so much. And, um, and she's, she's a wonderful lady, you know, and, and Emily, how I got to know her even more. Um, I, I just, I can't say anymore. I'm, I just feel so, a lot, I feel a lot of, I feel blessed and, and, you know, and, and grateful for everything. I, although, like I said, you know, the past seven, eight months had just been really tough and difficult, but to end this year, it's just, I'm getting more and more excited and more excited about what's coming up for us the next year. Because, you know, like what we said, we want to start the year with a bang and I think we're already starting it. So I'm excited with everything that's coming up. Likewise, I'm super excited. Um, I didn't even plan to do virtual seminars this year. It's just something that I, I was thinking about. It's you got to keep the new term, new norm or new way of doing things nowadays. Mm -hmm. And it's the more we get used to doing um, this podcast, the more used to just, you know, almost cold emailing or cold messaging someone on social media to say, hey, be a special guest. And it's great because now we're getting more guests and we're, we're actually excited. And it seems that to me, at least is my view, is every guest we interview, especially last two, Ray, Emily, uh, you guys haven't heard James yet because we had some technical difficulty, but we're going to reshoot again, are all adding to our personal values. You know, they're adding to me and my values, they're adding to what I love, they're adding to what I enjoy, they're adding to a lot of different things um, that are really now resonating high with me. I'm more in line with my purpose and it just into me for, you know, cause in reality, when we go through something and we're going through changes and there the unknown is in front of us, right? We can't help but second guess or unsure or uncertain. And when you have someone that kind of gives you that nudge or says, not tells you, but says the right things at the right time, it kind of gives you that nudge. And that's what the guest asked Emily, Ray Carmen, and James, even though you guys haven't heard him, he's given me the tools that I need psychological, subconsciously that I want to know I'm on the right, right path and more excitement about what I'm doing. Because at the same time we finish with these podcast guests, we may not hear from them again. And some of them we haven't even seen in person. Actually, with the exception of a few, we never seen our guests in person. So it, we may not catch up with them, but whatever the knowledge they express in their own personal journey through our podcast as a guest, that has stuck with me and hopefully vice versa. Whatever I said in the podcast, that stuck with them along their journey because we're all just connected together and we're just a big, big machine. Yes. And you know, what came up for me this week is um, loving and enjoying what I do. Um, and we talked about this opening up your third eye and I'm so glad that had happened to me um, this year. And in fact, I think it started last year. You know, um, what I've thought about was, you know, we all have different goals, right? And uh, we probably all want the same things. And what that is, is a life full of joy and meaning. But um, sometimes we focus on you know, the satisfaction that comes from living a meaning, meaningful life. But to feel that, to feel the meaning shows that our actions have purpose. So if, 
I think I want to speak for myself here. When I, I live intentionally with a clear sense of why what I do matters, then life for me has meaning and brings and it brings fulfillment. Oh my God, that sounds really, really good. Right. So I've the ju- this came up to me so much this week, and and that's why I feel I feel a lot of gratitude. I feel I feel blessed, and it, you know I'm excited. I'm excited for everything. And here's what I can tell you for both of us. And I I saw this. Um, this was on the Jay Shetty book. I don't know if you started reading it, but you will see this. That it took like a week for it to get delivered. So I was, the Amazon <laughs> two day thing. I mean, that didn't happen in Jay Shetty. <laughs> <laughs> but I've I've learned a lot in that book. So what we do matters. So we matter. It does. Yes, and that means we, you and I, and all the other life coaches there, like Amy and you know the, uh, our mastermind group, we matter. So the question is, do you think you matter? Yes. Awesome. You know why you matter? Why? All of us are connected. I don't care who you are, where you come from, what language you speak, where you live. We're all connected. And when we are, we are designed to be in an orchestra or, you know, someone's playing the banjo, someone's playing the flute, someone's playing the saxophone, whatever. Everybody has their own specific tune and they need to play that voice. And you got to think about this. The more you play your own tone or beat to your own drums, the more fulfilled you feel. You're not searching for what's the right tune, what's the right instrument, what's going on. I'm not happy. I, I'm not, I'm not getting self-care because you're doing your own tune. Like when I left, when I left California, moved to Bellingham, Washington, I feel less stress. hundred mm-hmm. percent. Just, I, I, I don't know what it was. I think it, what, it, what it is I'm doing, I'm being propelled more to do what I want and what makes me happy versus what I have to do. Mm-hmm. And that makes a big difference. The second thing is no one gets anywhere in this world alone. Right. So any podcaster, Ray Carmen, as example, she will be on our summit. Can't wait to hear. She she got somewhere because people helped her. She hired coaches. Emily hired a coach. These people say, hey, I, I need some help. I, I, who need to hire? Hired spiritual leaders, coaches, and they thus invested in themselves to get to a new path, a new place in life. So we don't go anywhere on our own. No, and let me tell you, um, speaking of um, life coaches too, is that why it was another reason this is this happened to me yesterday at school. Why another reason that I really do matter and what I do does matter. Um, and I am here to help. We all are. I have a student, um, she was talking to me about, you know, life coaching. 13 years old, right? Who would, you know, I... I do work with a lot of kids, a lot of students, teenagers, you know, she has a life coach herself and she opened up to me, um, what, why she ended up having one and, you know, what having a life coach has done for her. She's only 13. So guy, you know, I forgot to ask how long she's had a life coach and she's had her life coach for a while. But the difference of where she first started and where she is now had made such a big impact in her and her life. You know, I look at her. She's such a good girl. She's she's very um, open and she's down to earth. But she was expressing to me that before that, that wasn't her. Because she didn't know who she was. She says she thought I was going crazy. I thought something was wrong with me. I didn't know what to do with myself. And she said, my parents was getting overwhelmed with me. And where do I go? What do I do? Um, do I see a therapist? Which, you know, not to bring any therapist down. Um, any help, I think, uh, for especially for kids, is great. She, was, she had a therapist for a couple of months, which she didn't like. She wasn't enjoying it and she just wasn't into it. And then so they said, okay, what's our next option? And let's do a life coach. And this is where things just kind of like, you know, in the beginning, it was hard for her until she realized that I'm I'm getting somewhere with this. And I think it took her about also a couple of months until 
she realizes, I want to stick with this. This is working for me because it's opening up something else for her. Finding her true self at 13 and she's not done. You know, she's still got a long way and she's still got a long journey. But whatever it was that she was going through before that, and what happened to her before that, it um, having a life coach with her and guiding her every week had helped her so much and changed her. She's like, she's, I didn't realize if I had known her before all that, I, I wish I, I did because then I would have seen the progress, you know? And what she was telling me who she was before, I looking at it, I was like, oh my God, I wouldn't even have known that you had gone through that or that you that would have been you. But again, that brings me to, you know, loving what we do, what I do, and um, living it with, you know, living it intentionally. Um, and I've realized not realize, I think I've always known this and I've always have it in my heart, but I've just been doing a lot of thinking this week about this is that when you act out of love, you know that you are providing value. Certainly you do. All everything is changed by this world by love. And it's funny how, not funny, but I guess I'm using the word, but it's true that it doesn't matter what age you are. You may be going through something. You need some help. Just because you're seven years old doesn't not mean you figured it out. That means that 13 years old doesn't mean that you, you don't need help. There, there, she, there was something about it that... So energy attracts and repels. So by her parents, in her case, maybe putting too much pressure on her to be somebody or do something, she was repelling her and, and saying, I don't want to do this anymore. I, I, I don't want it. And that's what starts causing a lot of uh, dysfunction and frustration and upset and stress. And I need some help. I just want to talk to you because I'm being forced to something I don't like, rejecting it. Mm -hmm. And now she's just, she's always positive. She's all about love, you know, and she understands that there's a lot of people out there. And this is what she, she told me that in, in the beginning of it, people will think that, I do have issues. I have problems, but I don't need a life coach because I can fix this myself. Mm -hmm. And she's, and she's one of them that's gone through that. And I, you know, and I told her, you don't have to have an issue to have a life coach. You don't have to have, you don't have to be going through any depression or anything to have a life coach, you know, and that's not what having a life coach is just about, but yeah. And that, that's what she was, um, expressing that to me and you know it was I thought it was great and it touched me then I as I walked away from there that's when I realized yeah I really you know this is what really is for me yep so they're adding more tools to you not more tools but they're giving you that nudge for that you're doing the right thing for yourself and not just for yourself but for the future of the people around you and the people mm -hmm. you connect with mm -hmm. When I heard that term at the very end, he said, oh, most people think I hire a therapist, a life coach, because I have, I have a problem. Not necessarily. Now, for those that really have their, you know, they're schizophrenic, they have bipolar, and yeah, those really need some medical help. But all of us have a box. And through life and through our days, we put stuff in that box. It can be frustration. It can be depression. It can be upset. It can be a lot of different things. I'm not happy with the fact that I'm overweight, let's say. We put all these things in the box and we keep them to ourselves. Like so many of us talk to ourselves or we talk to ourselves through, through problems and we put it in that box. Well, the box is only so big. Just no difference than if you put boiling water and fill it up to the top and put it on the stove and let it alone, it will eventually boil over. That's exactly what happens. So you need to talk to a therapist or a coach because you inherently need to unbox some of that stuff. I, I, I'm unhappy. Okay, let's talk about that. Let's unbox it. Because the more and more you don't unbox it, see, the way things work is what is experienced internal, internally is experienced on the outside. Meaning that if you're going through a tough time, you will thus experience on outside, meaning that you can have 
bouts of anger, bouts of depression, you can have bouts of frustration, you can have bouts of you just going to the gym 10 days every day because you need to relinquish the stress. And that's what it's expressed on the outside. So something's going on internally, but then expressed on the outside. It, it can be expressed as a person sleeping in all, all the time. They don't have energy to go outside, but something else internally is happening. So by going to a coach or a therapist, it allows you to unbox that stuff. Mm-hmm. Who wants to go around carrying that the rest of their life or carrying that for a period of time? And, you know, and a lot of the times too, some people, they look, they look at it they look on the outside, right? So if they want happiness, they're looking at the outside of that box. But they don't, what you got to realize and understand is that happiness is not, is, is internal. Mm -hmm. It can be found within us. Not necessarily outside. And I, 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 I know I'm, I've experienced that, you know, where I feel like I want to be happy. So I'm looking at the outside. I'm looking at what makes me happy out there. But happiness, you know, until I've come to terms that happiness, happiness is within me. I have to really find it and dig in there. What really makes me happy? Mm hmm. That's that's the thing that people don't realize is that in our society, we're, we're, we're pretty much well endowed with the objective, subjective appearance of happiness. The more money you have, let's say, the more happy you be, the more success you have with friends, the happier you are, the better career, all this stuff. Okay, but where is the root cause and where does happiness come from? It really just comes from yourself doing things that make you happy. I'll give you an example. My goal, let's say a year ago, was by the time I was 46, now being 37, I want to be a millionaire. So the more money I have, the happier I feel. It was up into my drive here to Billy in Washington. I realized, wait a minute here. How much money do I really, really need just to maintain my life and things I like doing? I don't need that much. I, I really don't. Okay, so wait a minute. If I helped out a million people, would I be much more happier? Hell yeah, it would be. So I focus on helping out more people because internally, I would be much more happier. So that's why you got to focus on the internal. So I was looking for on an external. Of, oh, I get, if I'm a million, I'm, I'm so happy. I can buy these cars. I can buy this. How many cars can you drive? One. Mm-hmm. So if you have five cars, how many you drive? One. How many pairs of pants do you need to have? One. How many do you go out? With COVID pandemic, no one's going out at this point. So... How, how many you need of really? I mean, do you need 50 pairs of jeans? Do you need 10 pairs of shirts? Do you need 50 computers? What really do you need, right? Yeah. Get to the root of the matter. <clears throat> and it's really, it really boils down to this. I just read it right now in David Hawkins' book. I just got a new one. I'm almost done with the trilogy. I finished almost all of his books. It's not the, the objective. So uh, let's say success or let's say money, right? It means nothing. What means is our judgment with money. So let's say our parents will always say money doesn't grow in trees or, or money is the root of all evil. Money entirely has no feeling. It, it's not consciously alive. It's our judgment that's, that's with money that causes that dysfunction. So my judgment is that more money I've had, the more happiness I have. That's a judgment call. The less money I have, the less happy I am. That's a judgment call. So that's why those old sayings of the more money you have, no, sorry, the money, money is root of all evil, is really just objective. That's not really true. Conscious money doesn't have any feeling. But the pursuit of money or judgment against money will cause all the suffering. So this could be, this is like an illusion. So we think that success will equal to happiness. But this this idea is really an illusion. So when we let let's say achievement achievements um, let's say determine our course, or you know we're we're living in that illusion that happiness comes from all that. But well, let's say we get that, we find success, we get what we want. It doesn't really lead to happiness. So in that case, it's, you have to really be connected, or you have to connect with the soul, not from the, not from the objects. 
You know, I um, I remember I, while I'm listening to you, I was thinking I there was a celebrity or an actor because I'm thinking about all this, um, all the celebrities, you know, all the fame and money that they have. Right? They have everything that you could think of, that everything that a lot of us could want or would want. But we don't sometimes think that, are they happy with their life, you know? And it was, um, God, I can't remember which celebrity it was. Kanye he, West? Huh? Kanye West? No, it was um, somebody else. And he mentioned one time, he said that, um, he was saying that he thinks that everybody should get rich and famous and um, and just get everything that they've ever dreamed of. So that they can see that that's not the answer. Um, was it Jim Carrey? Ah, okay. Yes, because I don't know if you've seen Jim Carrey hasn't been like around a lot lately. I think he's you know um, he was going through something for a while, and I, I, I he was in a um, it was on a, one of those TV shows. But that was one thing that he said, and I was watching it. And he said that, yeah, you know, he believes or he thinks that why why don't everybody just get rich and famous, you know, and, and see, then they they know that this is not this is not the answer to to their happiness. But you know what the lore is? Turn turn any 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 TV program right now, and that's a kind of a lure there. Lure meaning something is drawing you in. It could be the nice new body. So if I had that body, I can wear those sexy clothes. If you notice now when you shop online, very bottom it says online, we look at a new outfit or you're going to buy a pair of clothes. It says this model is six foot tall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Because what happens, they're being sued because they're saying I should look like that. And then when they buy, I don't look like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so, so <laughs> Go ahead. I'll say something after. So that's what's around us. It's always the lures. If I do this, I'll be happy for do that. I'll be happy for do this. I'll be happy. Or, you know, if you ever look at a vacation, right? So infomercials with vacation, they're not showing some of that that's overweight. So when I first went to Hawaii, I was like, oh man, people don't have a ripped body, six pack. <laughs> that was so a total true. lie. Okay. <laughs> so we look at these vacations, they have person, they're skinny, they're young, they're youthful, they're happy. The lure is if I go on that vacation, I'll be filled just like them. I went to Hawaii. I just seen these commercials and that's not what i saw but it's funny we talk about stars and actors and let's say jim carrey has some kind of conscious awakening or enlightenment mm -hmm. he probably spent a lot of years being somebody he didn't want to be and what when they said i don't like being this person anymore and changed look what happened to um the one that committed suicide what's his name in san francisco uh uh Tony, not Tony Rod, Robin Williams. He was crying out for help. Nobody knew. He made, nobody knew that. He's making everybody else happy, but he wasn't happy. So if you can look at two actors, Jim Carrey and what's his name again? I totally forgot now. Robin Williams. Robin Williams. They're both, let's say, were comedians. Right? Let's look at that. But one says, wait a minute, is this really making me happy? And says, I don't, I don't want that anymore. I want to change. One says, I'm going to keep doing this because I like to make other people happy, even though it does not make me happy. Two, diff two different people, similar kind of backgrounds, but one had a conscious awakening and one did not. That's a big difference there. Mm -hmm. Yes, certainly true. But a lot of people also like to um, keep it to themselves. Of course. And I think uh, of course, what, you know, um, because if you're not, if you're not a part of the norm is whatever the norm is, then you're not part of the norm. Yeah, exactly. And this is why, you know, again, I go back to, <laughs> to us, to, I, I'm just, I'm, you know, I, I know you are too, that what you're doing is me. This is where you find happiness, you know, more now, more so now than, than fitness or, you know, than in the fitness industry. And I know you could feel the difference and you feel the difference and, you know, same goes with me. And the more I hear about it too, like it's, it's 
like a reassurance. Sometimes we need that, right? So when we hear from other people, um, the impact that we've made and and how, you know, just what we're doing right now is just impacting so many people. When we hear it, it just makes us know and it reassures us that we're on the right path. We're doing what we really want to do and what we really makes us happy. Like, you know, an example would be, I think I read this to you one time that I had a um a parent who emailed me and he what did he say? I think I have it here. He said, he knows that any students who engages with me will be for the better. And again, that was another reassurance for me that okay, I am doing something that I didn't even realize sometimes, you know, that I'm doing this. You know why you don't realize you're doing it? Because you're living within your purpose. When you're doing something you really enjoy doing, you don't think about it. You don't constantly as this happens, it's, it evolves, it's, it's, it's a flow, it's, it's happening. When you think about something, then that's where it's, man, you know, so I was, uh, I got, uh, I'm on Facebook and um, the other day, um, you know, so there's a lot, a lot of people that are on my Facebook, um, also people I used to work with at Fry's, Fry's Electronics. Mm-hmm. And Fry's Electronics made an announcement they're closing Campbell's store. And then, you know, someone shares a link and it pops up in my feed and I read it and what happened. And obviously, it's always, oh, we're restructuring, we're, we're going to repurpose, blah, 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 blah. Okay. And I am really thankful and blessed the fact I'm not there. I, I, I'm not there because the, the thing is, is that that company led with a lot of fear. And the fear was, you're going to lose your job. The fear was, you're going to be fired. The fear is, I have a title and I'm above you. So I can tell you what to do. And look how it imploded. The owners didn't take care of the directors. Directors didn't take, take, take care of the associates. The store manager didn't, didn't take care of the system store manager. The system manager didn't take, take care of the associates. It was a ripple effect because the company led with this, this fear-based mentality, which eroded the whole company. That's really what it boils down to. And and people always say, oh, it's Amazon. They didn't transition. That company led with fear. They didn't invest back in themselves. It, it was just a total and utter disaster. And I'm so thankful I met some wonderful people through my life. Stan Lau, he helped me quit almost four years ago. It would be four years in February. He said, without taking risk, you will never know success. I was completely done. But then I didn't know my path was greater than just personal training. Now, after time has passed, my path is greater than personal training. And I'm doing what I want because I'm getting more energy to do it. And making time for it. Mm-hmm. So that's when you're talking about being in a flow, you're talking about being in love, you're talking about all that stuff. I'm doing exactly what I want to and where I should be at the right time. So, guys, I hope you learned something from this podcast. You know, what's beautiful about Freestyle Thursday is that it went from about my son and me and to something completely different. And that's the greatest <laughs> yeah. thing to developing conversations with people and and just talking and we're not holding back and we're not saying, okay, I got to make sure I say specifically this because I want to be or feel a certain way. No, this is we're human beings and we're prone to error, prone to, to not knowing something to after the fact, like I didn't know about steroids to after the fact and all this happened to me to after the fact. So thank you again for listening to another freestyle Thursday, lifestyle podcast. This is Ron Johnson your life coach. And for those that, you know, do listen to our podcast, but are in need of some help, we're hosting a virtual summit, which is going to be on December 21st through the 23rd, having some amazing guests on Zoom. And it's pretty much the focus for us is self-care. And if you need that self-care, you need that help, you need some more insight or just unbox your box. Come join us December 21st to 23rd on our self-care summit. Mm-hmm. Thanks again. And yes. And each day we'll be, um, we'll be talking about something different. We have different guests and check us out on our website. Um, the information will be there and um, contact us. And before we end, I just wanted to leave our listeners um, something that was in my mind is that to, to live intentionally, we have to dig in, dig deep to why behind the want 
And if, you know, you'd have to take a moment for yourself to think about this, why we want something, but also who we are or need to be to get it. And that's it. And again, thank you for tuning in to um, another episode of Lysa Shuffle.